I've been waiting just over a year for this <laughs> and um, I think it's paid off. Absolutely glorious. Glorious. Are you coming in for a cuppa? Now I'm going to take a stab in the dark and guess you want milk and one sugar and I'll just have mine black. There you go. Now we're all settled, I'll go back to the hallway and I can show you around. Hi, I'm Vicky and welcome back to my Carpenter's Daughter YouTube channel and welcome to our new home. Yes, that means we were successful in the auction process and I thought you might just want to have a look at the before stage because this is a renovation home, there's lots to do and I want to show you as I go around the plans what we've got in mind and I'd love your suggestions as well so feel free to chip in in the comments because it's always very valuable I've got something in my mind you've got something completely different and historically I've ended up going with your ideas so the more the merrier so I think we're going to start with this weird hall now I say weird it's larger than normal it's larger than we need and this window is here, which yes, I do plan on getting rid of. And when I came in here for the first time, the first thing I thought, this felt like a serving hatch in a GP, but it does match the Tudor style wood. I think it's Tudor style wood. I don't know if that is structural. Now in the homes that I grew up in, the room next door to the door was always a little bathroom, well, a toilet. But when we open this, it's just a, well, it's our junk room at the moment for our pictures and stuff, but there's no toilet in here at all. But you can see that there's boxed in pipes, or at least you could until we put our stuff in. But um, I don't know what we're gonna do with this. I'll leave a floor plan now on the screen, but an idea we thought about recently is turning that maybe into an ensuite, turning this into a bedroom and putting the front door, well, it looks like a front door, at the other side of the house. To us, the other side of the house is technically the front of the house because it's closer to the road. And where the Tudor style wood is, we could put a wall there and reroute the doorway to the living room, which is behind you. So if you look at those original plans, this was originally meant to be a toilet, but the reason we don't feel like it needs to be a closet anyway is there's already another one round the corner and there's quite, there's a lot of storage in general, but they must have changed their mind very last minute because there's no drain outside at all. So as you can see, we're on the other side of the window, the um, window that I'm not really keen on. I do plan to get rid of that, as you know, but there's no other windows in here unless we have a Velux window installed. There is some natural daylight because there's a big archway leading to the, the living room. Now today is probably a very perfect day to do a house tour because it's horrible outside, it's really windy and I don't know if you can hear the wind and if you can, I'm not surprised because if you look up, it's noisy and this is probably why we got it so cheap. Now obviously there's a story behind this because this is a late 1980s bungalow. We don't think there's a lot wrong with it other than this. It's a large bungalow which may have put a lot of people off because normally people want to move in straight away and not have to deal with stuff. Now this property hasn't been lived in since April 2022 and coincidentally that was just a couple of months before we sold our last house, not the narrowboat, the house. So while it's not been lived in, one of the neighbours were actually looking after the place until it went up for auction and when the auctioneers or the estate agents took over the keys, that's when the property wasn't really getting looked after. So when there was a really bad winter, the pipes froze, bust, flooded the lounge and the living room probably elsewhere in the property. I don't know for the full extent. It's probably put a lot of people off and that's why it went up for auction. Now, when we looked at the original listings photos, all of the carpets were in. So we know that they've taken photos of the property before the disaster struck. Then they had to send somebody in to just tidy the place up and that's actually done us a favor. There's no carpets in here. There's no belongings. So we've actually been living here for five weeks, but we've had so many things to do before we've even got to editing videos. And the first thing was to fix leaks up in the attic, obviously, because that was, we needed water. So I've had to do lots of urgent patch ups with speed fit meeting copper. And so far so good, we haven't had any other leaks. So with no water, that obviously becomes a bit of an issue, but luckily my mother-in-law lives 15 minutes away, so we were able to use her shower every other day. And we were living in our camper van on the drive. Oh, and we had a port here as well. So it was just, just for a handful of days until we got sorted. And we had no heating as well, but there are videos coming up 
on how I fixed all of this and upcoming ones of how we've got it to this stage. Oh, and I think we've got a wasp nest up there that we need to remove. Now, in terms of access, getting up there, we're sport for choice. There's loads of places we could just reach with our ladder. But climbing around there has been a pain. So one of the things I do plan to do is board it out and obviously get the insulation back because now it's autumn, it's gonna be winter soon, we are losing heat up here. And this house is all electric as well. There is a fire just around the corner. So if we don't get this sorted out soon, it's gonna get costly just to heat the place up. Otherwise we're gonna be wearing loads of thermals and obviously something that I need to do is make sure it's got good lagging around the pipes. We don't want another burst pipe situation like this. And I forgot to say, plasterboard, that is key. I also plan to install some attic lights and a loft ladder, which we don't have one. It's a hatch and it's very small. You'll see that shortly. Also, I do plan to take these picture rails down. I can't really see use for them other than for us, well, collecting dust. But we do know that the previous owner used them to display her plate, but we don't have any plates. Now, before I show you the living room, this is just a little draft excluder, my patchwork quilt. We've clipped to some string and behind here is the fireplace in the living room. But something that we may do is open it out so it's like a two-way one. So this dining room hopefully can benefit from the extra heat. And these are, I believe, just places to put more ornaments. But it is collecting dust at the moment. So when we want to use the living room, we just close this. It's not uh, foolproof, but you can feel a bit of a difference. Now, I can't seem to get a very good angle in here, so we're going with this for a second. But we've got the fireplace here. Now, we have done a smoke pellet test and all was fine. So it's safe to go. And we also had to buy a carbon monoxide tester just in case and a fire extinguisher just in case we had any problems. Luckily, we are fine. And we're so used to having a stove because we had one on the narrowboat as well. And as time goes on, any trees that we cut down, we can season and use them. But we've also got some coal just to, um, to keep us going for a bit. And as you can see, the setup is a bit random at the moment, nothing matches. And the TV is just propped up on some chairs because we've still got stuff to come out of storage. And we've got another big TV coming. I think it's about 72 inch. Husband's obsessed with TVs. And that's probably gonna go on this wall or I might have to build a unit for it. Actually 72 inch, that's not a very good idea, is it? You know, I don't really think there's a lot to do in here other than decorating. I don't plan to have the textured wallpaper. I'll be taking all of the wallpaper off throughout the house. I'm just not a fan of wallpaper. And there's settlement cracks on the ceiling plasterboard that I know I've got a lot of gouging out to do. And that's not going to be the most exciting of jobs. He's waiting for the fire to be on. Oh, and this is another thing that I need to sort out. This is sagging with soot and maybe even mouse droppings there. To me it looked like plasterboard, but the previous owner's friend said it was something else. I can't remember what it was called. But if you can recommend any products that would sit nicely there instead, because obviously I've got to take that out, it's, uh, there's an issue there, then please let me know. And also, this cement is, is coming off. So I need to redo this, and I'm not sure what that is behind. <sighs> He's probably behind it, but yeah. Also something I'd like your opinion on, would you paint this or leave it? Obviously if you paint something like this, there's no going back. Maybe a whitewash would look nice. Now I'm still behind the sofa in our living room and we've got some patio doors that lead to a conservatory. Now the conservatory is a early 1990s build. We know that it wasn't original apart from the archers. I do plan to replace these because these are the original ones. They're quite old. I know that we need to replace the nylon roller because it doesn't open as smooth as it should. But this is one of our favorite rooms in the house. So if you've been following me for a while, you might be wondering where my workshop is. Right now, it's in here. <laughs> and I've got to keep the blinds closed just in case anybody spots them through the window. And when we first walked in here during our first viewing, it felt like we walked into a villa. Like this was the balcony, you know, when you usually get a clothes horse, you can look down on the swimming pool. Okay, there's no drop to it, but it just felt like a villa kind of room. And you know what, it was, it, it was lovely. And when we first got the keys for this place, we lived in here, had a mini living room set up because it was the warmest room in the house. But I don't think I'm gonna do a lot with this. Might have to put some heating in here for when it gets really cold. Also, I think it's a very good quality roof. There's uh, a pattern in it, like it's a diffuser, 
thought I think it needs a good clean anyway though because one side looks like a white and the other side looks more yellow so eventually that's well that's another job on our list right. another job we've got to do is replace some of these blown windows this one's got moisture in it I can imagine pattern ones are going to cost a fortune to do and we've got some leaking guttering up here that needs to be sorted and while I'm here we've got a little garden growing up there as well so I'm going to dedicate cleaning guttering to a separate video sounds exciting <laughs> I think in the next room we will show you the kitchen so one of the things that sold me on this bungalow was the size of this kitchen as we we're walking around I could see yep visualize a kitchen island in the middle that's why we've got this temporary table in the center it's also where we've been eating our meals and because we're so used to being in a narrowboat almost huddled up and we can hear each other we've moved our desks to the side of it where maybe more kitchen units should be and especially an american fridge freezer and everyone we've had round seems to love these uh, kitchen units now i don't really like them because they're not real wood they're just not me and if you've probably noticed it's quite dark in this room and i think it needs brightening up another thing i really want is a massive skylight here just to bring more natural daylight in that's probably going to be costly so i might change my mind on that even just taking the wallpaper off because it's quite yellow brightening it up might make a significant difference and just changing the lights because there's two round lights there and one wall light at the other end I don't think it's bright enough but right now I'm not going to change anything because it's it's acceptable it's livable we're able to cook in here and it's clean now it wasn't clean another video coming up on that but the first week we lost time just clean just deep cleaning here and speaking of which on our very first viewing I found mouse droppings underneath the sink now I didn't realize how bad things actually were but if you want to have a look at a video that I filmed where our dog Hans did a house tour his nose went straight to certain places and later on I realized why particularly the oven just gross thinking about it now if you don't know I'm a food blogger at tastelyviki.com so what I want to do a plan is to go all the way to the end at least with more kitchen units have the island as you know and if I can get away with another corner unit there I will do and then the fridge freezer or reconfigure this door because when you go through there you've got a hallway which isn't really doing a lot you do have a closet there and a utility on the other end now I don't want to incorporate the utility that wall will stay but it feels a bit weird to go through here then take a short left to go into the utility so we might plan to knock this wall out I don't know yet we'll just see how funds take us and if you want to support me on patreon and see these plans happen feel free another thing that feels really weird to me is when I walk through this door into the kitchen I keep reaching for a light switch here and it's not there it's on this side which is obviously good if you're coming from that angle so I think there needs to be another one here as well it does sound a bit weird having two very close to each other or maybe we just get used to it i don't know but i do have a question i want to update this kitchen it's too dark would you rip out the, the kitchen and start again or just update what is there what do you think is the cheapest easiest mm, yeah i'm curious um what your thoughts are on that but i definitely want an integrated oven and a microwave because we don't have one also on this side of the kitchen we've got the original external window you can see through to the porch which was added later I'm guessing this was added around the 90s at the same time as the conservatory so before I go to the porch this is where the coat closet is there's a new stain up there that I created more on that leaking uh, video coming up so let's talk about the porch so the kitchen window is just here where our desks are and I don't really know what to do with this porch because right now it's a dumping ground for our wellies and things that we plan to take to the skip and stuff and it's a single brick wall with cladding around the cladding I feel needs painting it does feel dated I might take the cladding off just to see what it looks like but this also doesn't look great because you've got a few cuts there they're not staggered and there so I don't know what to do with this maybe you've got an idea next room is a utility 
So I'm looking forward to doing up this room and it's quite a spacious utility. These units here, they were very, very filthy. We found more droppings, more on that in another video. But right now, it's just where we're storing our carrier bags and stuff, all of our cleaning things and storing any recycling. But I want a sink because we can do some pre-soaking of any clothes before they go in the washing machine. I'm thinking about putting units all the way around and just generally modernize it with some extra shelves. But if we look on the other side, this is where we've got our washing machine and tumble dryer. There was a appliance tea running down here. So we're all right for that. And one of the first things that we had sorted was update the, the fuse box because it was really, well I say really old, it was old as me, 40 years old. In fact, the electrician that came around to sort it called it the widow maker, but now it's replaced. We've got all of our certificates. He's emailed them off to the council and it's just peace of mind. And if anything goes wrong, we can flip a switch. And just to put your mind at rest, we are only using the tumble dryer in an absolute emergency if things aren't really drying very quickly. So as we walk through the hall, to the right hand side of me is the immersion heater storage area. So this is a 2016 electric immersion heater. I don't know what the capacity is, but when we got the water back up and running, this worked for about five minutes and it just stopped. And I was really looking forward to a bath. It was this that needed replacing a heating element with a thermostat on top, which is hidden, it's awkward. We do plan to update this eventually, but we might rethink this setup anyway because it doesn't heat up a full bath and I like my baths. And behind you is the smallest bedroom. So if you look to your left, this is just filing cabinets from one end to the other and we're treating it as our stationary room. I do like the idea of this becoming a crafts room at some point and just books and things or camera equipment. And on this side is the original fitted wardrobe. I think there's some Sapili in here, just inside. It feels real, but this doesn't feel real. So I do plan to take this out eventually and do something with it, but something I'm not keen on, somebody's fitted it around a socket and it just looks weird. Next up is the main bathroom. Oh, actually, we should probably talk about um, the obvious because like I said before, we're sport for choice at the moment where we can access the attic. This I want to install some loft ladders, but it needs to be longer so the ladders can actually go that way. But let's go into the bathroom. If you like wallpaper, this room is for you, particularly when it goes with this. <laughs> but uh, no, seriously, this electric shower it was the first place we were able to bathe because it's not connected to the immersion heater. So we had instant hot water, it was bliss. I've got big plans to tile this place and make it really modern. But if you turn around, I'm gonna to talk to you about the problem we had when we tried to run our first bath. So it's a bit damaged here because I had to rip it out and fix a leak. Well, I didn't intentionally do that. I tried to do it as carefully as I could. It's because the access screws had been covered up with the tiles so I couldn't even get to them and the ones that I could see were all rusty and right now it's usable obviously it's dated but it's a place we can get clean at the end of the day and, um, and just go to bed so right now I'm, I'm okay with it there's not a lot to say about this room it's just where we're storing shoes and stuff at the moment and we had to do some cleaning in here because there was quite a bit of mold up there from the moisture from the the leaky pipes i don't know what i'm going to do with that if you've got any ideas let me know it's just uh, an airing cupboard now we've got two bedrooms left and then we're done out of here do we go to i tell you what we'll save the best till last this is where i've just been waking myself up with a coffee doing my makeup it's it's all right it's not as cozy as it probably would have been or should be and behind is a big fitted wardrobe. Do you remember those Sharps wardrobe adverts? I feel like it's that kind of company that's come in and fitted these. But if I could put these wardrobes in our main bedroom, that would be the ideal solution. And I'm gonna show you that room next. There's not really a lot to talk about in here. Also something that we think and the electrician thought was absolute bonkers is that there's only one plug socket in this room. Okay, it's a double one. You need more sockets in a bedroom surely and i've got a key question that i need to ask you and 
a scenario. These are the original Dimplex storage heaters, which should be on Economy 7. But so many people have said Economy 7 is a false economy now because the rates are more expensive than they used to be during the day and it's not that cheap on an evening. So we are planning to change. And by the way, if you can recommend any really low powered but good electric radiators, let me know. There are so many out there, I don't know what to go for yet. And obviously if you're buying loads for a house, it's quite a risk. Also one of the biggest things we're gonna invest on this house is solar panels. So we're gonna try and keep our costs down as much as possible. So if you've got any recommendations of solar panel companies, please let me know below and I'm gonna still do research on them. But there's just so many out there, it's really hard to find a good one from a bad one. And when replacing these, would you turn this into a double socket where you can just plug this straight into it or still have these hardwired? So we're here at last. It's the final room, the main bedroom. Oh, and there's a dog trapped in here. Come on then, come on. God, that took some coaxing. So I've made this, oh. So I've made this as cosy as we possibly could without carpets. It seems like we've put most of the rugs in it. Well, okay, that's not true, but we've put large rugs in here to feel like you're stepping out onto a carpet when you get out of bed. We've put some furniture in. I do want to tell everybody what this room's like. Do you like this room? In fact, Hans really didn't like the house when we first moved in. There's no carpets and he didn't know whether we were coming and going until we put this bed up. It felt settled then. But this, on the other side of the camera, really confused me from day one during our first viewing. Now you might think this looks naff, but this is exactly why we chose this room. It just made much more sense. Well, I'm gonna close this door. That's got a mind of its own, likes to open itself. But all of these wardrobes open this way. And when I first came into this room, I was trying to pull the doors this way as well, thinking, oh, well, I knew there'd been a flood in here. Maybe the doors have blown and I could have ripped the doors off because it goes that way. It's a hidden en suite. So I've got an antique shower, a Super 7X red ring, they look so different today if you search Red Ring. And initially we thought this wasn't working, we thought it was broken. And it turns out it was just a fuse. Also we've got this tiled area that sticks out and I don't know what's behind here. It sounds solid, unless it was designed as a seat. But I've got plans for this room. It's screaming wet room. It's screaming wet room to me. I've never done one before, my father-in-law has, and he made it look easy, and he saved himself 10,000 pounds by doing it himself. So that's what I'm feeling for this room and a radiator, there's no heating in here. And while I do that, I'm gonna try and tidy this boxed in area, the pipes that lead to the bathroom next door. While I'm sat on the loo, I'll tell you the stopcock story. When a person passes away and you buy an auction property, it's very unlikely you get your fixtures and fittings forms and your contents form. So when we moved in and wanted to test the water, we didn't know where the stopcock was and we found it at the back of this ensuite toilet and we expected it under the kitchen sink. We can't even find the one outside either. We expected one near the driveway. Don't know where that is. Maybe we'll find it eventually once we've cut lots of vegetation because there's overgrown grass everywhere. So even though we've only been living at this property for five weeks and it's a big renovation project and normally an auction property, you don't know much about the history we know a lot more than we thought we'd ever find out. And that's purely down to really good neighbors and friends of neighbors and friends of the people that used to live here. So I couldn't be more grateful for the opportunity to be able to take you along the whole story of this place, how it got started, because this bungalow is actually situated on a four acre farm with barns, the original old cottage. So I've got so much to tell you. I'm beaming with excitement. And next week, I'm gonna show you some drone footage to show you the extent of this property. It's exciting, so exciting.